Welcome to this edition of the GTV Preview Show, which is recorded for the Friday meeting, which takes place at Fairview and the running of the Algoa Cup. Joining me in the studio is none other than Paul Lafferty. Paul, talking about the Algoa Cup, you won it. Yep, I won it with Shanin Rock. I remember I shipped him down from here. I remember clearly I went to Ricky Mangon and said, uh, what if you had a treatment? Should I give this horse for that? He said, do this, take this regime to help the horse get over the trip and that. Jeff Lloyd wrote it for me. I flew down with Matthew Lips and another. I was as sick as a dog. I lay in the nurse's room, came out, watched the race. The horse won, Jeff Not much better? Not really. <laughs> I, I went back and they dragged me off to catch a plane back home. So no, the Algoa Cup, I, I remember it fondly. Let's get straight into the first race, a very active program. Let's have a look at the betting for race number one at 12.20. We're number five, Flowers of Nark, 28 to 10. Number eight, Burning Moon is 7 to 2. Number four, Emily Spirit is 4 to 1. Paul, let's kick off with number five, Flowers of Nike from the powerful Gavin Smith stable, knocking hard on the door, and a set of blinkers could just enhance the chances. Absolutely. That's what I was gonna, going to suggest, that this would, uh, we'll, we'll just about pull it off. It's got a couple of horses to beat. It's coming back down to a 1,200, but it's formed solid, and uh, Sumanga Kumala is a, a, a great plus, so a, a massive runner. Number eight, Burning Moon. Now, this is another one who comes from the Gavin Smith stable. Very promising introduction. Went third behind Tipsy Tina, but did go off at big odds. Yeah, went off and uh, didn't get away on terms. So it was a good run. Running third, a uh, bit sluggish at the gate, goes the extra furlong and gets the man of the moment in the saddle. So this is a, a major run, a, a very strong couple of horses we've spoken about for Gavin Smith. Then we go on to the Mitchley stable number one, Tard is High. That comes with some very good form after running second in the last two runs. Must be a big player. And number four, Emily Spirit with Richard Faria aboard, Love Wires. Emily Spirit definitely, and and then Muzieni gets the ride on Tard is High. As you say, runner up, last two runs. Uh, it, it makes it a competitive race, but I think Gavin Smith might just have the edge. Let's move straight on to race number two. Race number two is due for 12.55. That is the time that you'll need to get your bets on. It's over 1,000 metres. The money for number two, Fedra, from 12 to 10, down 9 to 10. Number four, Civil Rights is 3 to 1, 6 to 1, and upwards the balance. Number two, Fedra, in the space of a few months, has gone up from a 62 to a 95. And just looking at this individual, has won its last five or six runs, very impressive. This is the type of horse who's just continuing to beat the handicapper, Paul. Very much so. Back down to 1,000. Fedra, for me, is a beautifully bred horse by Versing Gidricks out of a trippy mare. And uh, for me, a banker in my bar pot, I have no doubt this horse will be the horse to beat. And I definitely think it'll be in the first two. Well, there you have it from Paul. Looking at number two, Fedra, since relocating to Fairview, has done absolutely nothing wrong. Course and distance is three from three. Four from four at the course, and distance-wise, seven runs for five wins. So a lot to like about number two, Fedra. Let's push on to race number three. Race number three, and this will be due off at 13.30. So half past one is the time you'll need to get your bets on. It's over 1,600 metres. And let's just have a quick look at the anti-post betting for the third race. Where number seven, Green Mandarin, is the ruling favourite at 13 to 10. Number eight, Perfection, from 28 to 10, has shortened down 22 to 10. And Copernicus, number one, is trading around 7 to 2. Paul, race number three, number seven, Green Mandarin. We've seen the Glen Cotson team when they rode with their horses with high success. Hasn't been on the track for 186 days. But I remember that race very clearly. Stood in the gates, yes. lost many lengths. That's right. You can just about put a line through that run, Sheldon. It's a beautifully bred horse as well. Uh, give me the green light out of a Galileo mare. And uh, I think uh, this mile, it'll be ready. And it gets a very good ride in Kelvin Habib. Uh, the horse to beat for me. 
Got to agree with you. And just looking at the comment from the stable, doing well, and that's good enough for us. So 13 to 10, number 7, Green Mandarin, ran just under three lengths behind Big Slick. First time out, sets the bar. And we know when Glenn Cotson steps at the Fairview Garden, he takes home all the prize money. So Green Mandarin, a very confident selection. Let's step into the ring for race number four, which is over the trip of 1,400 metres. Looking at the runners, a number of horses come here with some good form. Now in race four, Paul, number three, And We Dance. This is for Andy Williams and the Hepburn Browns. Has been a different specimen since relocating. Yeah, done well down there, definitely. Gets Louis and Quarter, another very good rider. And this path hawk must have uh, an uh, undeniable chance. It has come down to... Uh, Quebec won those two races comfortably, dropped back down to a 14, but I thought it really trotted up last time, and, and, and it, it's got a couple to beat, but it's definitely the right horse form-wise. Number two, Phoenix from the Alan Kreef stable, just looking at this individual, is still a three-time winner from the 22 runs. Was five and three quarter lengths behind and we danced last time out, but I just get the feeling it's going to be a lot closer on this occasion. Yeah, it could do. It's, it's certainly another good rider than town, Grand Fenikek. Some very good riders have come in for the meeting for Ellen Kriop and uh, would have a chance. I'm just wondering if the stable mate Bella Belize isn't the better one with Richard Ferry riding. That's number six. Uh, first, first, second. The form's solid. The trip's perfect. And uh, I think that might be uh, Henry Dance's biggest worry. And then if you're looking to throw in a roughie, number one from year to eternities, just had the one run at Fairview when was beaten into eighth position. The Alamites go on, so it's a gin strike, and this could be the lurker in the pack. Throw in number one from year to eternity at double figures. Throw in Dame of Flames for Dame your of pick Flames. six. Okay, oh, yeah, there we have it. Paul says yeah. throw in Dame yeah. of Flames, so that's definitely chance. worth throwing into the pick six. Let's shoot across to race number five. We're moving into the second half of the card, race number five. And let's just get there. 1440, 1400 meters. When you look at the field, highly competitive. You've got a number of horses who've achieved high ratings in this contest. Number seven, Legitimate, was a 101, is now racing off a 91. And majority of the horses pull, they have achieved quite high ratings, so it's going to be very competitive this race. I think it's a tough race, yeah. I've got a few that I'm putting in here. I, uh, I thought that the form of uh, Alan Kreos of Bold Resolve probably sets the standard. Richard and him teaming up again has won, uh, what's it, three of its last four. And uh, it never knows how to run a bad race. And that's probably the horse, the, the march of my fate, that, that sets the mark. There are others that will take it on. But my initial salvo, I would be leaning towards bold resolve. Uh, other horses that I, I would include would be uh, Keep It Secret. I think Mersey's going to be pushing hard for Justin Snaith in town. I think Keep It Secret's got to be included. Uh, as well as uh, Adios Amigos, Candice Bass Robinson has brought this in. Not to just have a look at the lay of the land. And uh, one other that I would put in is uh, Moon Game. And I'd add number 10, Bush Tracker, there into the equation. Glenn Cotson, he holds a very strong hand on the day. And I think it's going to be an ideal race for number 10, Bush Tracker, to get back to some sort of form. Let's look at race number five as we slide on to race number six, which is due off at 15.15. That's the time you need to get your bets on. It'll be contested over 1,600 metres. Let's have a look at the betting for race number six, where number one, Kaya's Hope is five to two. Number three, Iconic Destination, four to one. Number two, Grinkov, my first selection from 11 to two down nine to two. And those are the top three in the betting. Paul, looking at this race, let's touch on number one, Kaya's Hope first up. King and Amelo rode this one last time out. A super impressive win in that company. Yeah, won very well. And, uh Again, uh, I think it's, it's got a massive chance. It's coming from Gavin Smith's yard. And uh, Keegan, very consistent horse and uh, no problems. It does step up the extra furlong. And uh, I certainly think it'll be right up at Sally. So a big runner for me. And I uh, obviously have respect for Grinkov. Has ability to locked horns with Cousin Casey. 
So there we have it, numbers one and two. I think that'll be sufficient. I'm leaning with number two, Grinkov, who has shortened from 11 to two, down nine to two. Oh, sorry, I see uh, Andre Nels coming to town with the uh, iconic destination with Grand Finico. Second to Charles Dickens. That's what stares at you, you know. So we might have to go three horses there. One, two, and three. So that'll be the horses for the shortlist. And if you're looking to add anything else into your exotics, you might be able to find the lurker as far as race six goes. Let's move along to race number seven. And this is the tab for racing Algoa Cup listed. It'll be contested over 2,000 meters. And you heard from Paul Lafferty, he has won this race before. They went down there and they took home the lion's share. Looking at the Algoa Cup, it's always very competitive pool. Number one, Mount Anderson, fresh off a of victory, beating Grazing the Grass last time out. Grazing the Grass, he's got an outside gate to negate, whereas Mount Anderson's got the perfect draw. And then, of course, Glenn cotson has got number three, Crimson King, and number five, Chalima. Who would be your top two or three runners? I'm going to lean towards uh, Grazing the Grass to turn it on Mount Anderson. Uh, I don't think there'll be too much in it, but the draw is this factor. But Richard Free is really an accomplished rider. And uh, I think Gray's in the grass, but uh, this is the big race. It, it's competitive. The, there are horses that you have to put in. You know, uh, Chalima, Gav Lorena's in town. You know, he's, uh, he's a wonderful rider. Never Ending Rain. Look at the form there. That's got, that's got a chance as well. So it's, it's a race where I think you're going to need four or five horses for your pick six. There you heard from Paul, four or five runners for your pick six. They are betting 11 to two the field with number one, Mount Anderson, and number two, Grazing in the Grass. They both priced up at 11 to two. You be the judge and make your selections for the Algoa Cup. Next up will be race number eight. So let's move on to race number eight. And this is the Blue Steel Pinnacle Stakes over the trip of 1,100 meters. Taking a look at the best weighted column, number one, whatever next, is at a 103, so tops the best weighted column. Ahead of number three, Cruise Control, and number two, Captain Tatters. Those are runners for the shortlist, but there's a number of horses who could get in on it. Let's touch on number two, Captain Tatters first, Paul. On his day, this is a horse who can race with the best of them. Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Comes in... And uh, this is going to be a hell of a race. I think there's some good horses in this race. And, and Captain Tatters, you know, is a, is a well-bred horse who has good form. Muzi Yeni rides it. And uh, Justin sent it down here for this. Number three, Cruise Control. Six runs for four victories. Unbeaten course and distance. This is a horse we don't know how good he is. Very good horse. I watched him win last time. I was very impressed with the horse, Karori, a uh, flying Karori and... Uh, I think at, uh, it's, it's, it's my lead, lead horse, this horse, Cruise Control. I think Cruise Control, to me, is, uh, is the horse they all have to beat. And there's another horse I wrote down. Uh, I thought Richard Furry and Creef teaming up again with the Canford Cliffs, Cliff Top uh, with 55. I, uh, I would certainly have that as a, having a chance. It's running well. There we go, throw number 10, Cliff Top, and then maybe number 9, Paris Rix, is also worth a mention. Has been beaten by Cruise Control in the past, so might once again have to show up and run into the second or third box. Right, race number 9, due off at 1,700 hours, bringing down the curtain on the Algoa Cup race meeting. The Hollywood Bets classified stakes over the trip of 1,200 metres. Being a classified stakes, number five, Crown Plaza is the best weighted, ahead of number six, Crackling Rose. Number nine, Big Sky Country, who I give a big shout to, is right there in the best weighted department. And then number 10, Miss Venezuela. Paul, let's kick off at number one, Federal Reserve. This is a maiden taking on winners, 121 days off the track from the Glen Cotson team, carries the 60 kilograms. But just looking at this horse, they've nominated it for the big race. So a maiden taking on winners, he could be above the average? Could be. Could be. Might have had to do, have it all to do. But uh, certainly is, uh, is, is in here for a reason. You know, it's a, a top yard with a top rider. And they haven't just come down for, for nothing. I think it's got a chance. Number five, Crown Plaza, after being runner-up in the previous runs, last time faded out tamely. Yeah, it did. It's last time certainly wasn't wasn't its run. It uh, went to the front and fell, fell away. 
I'm inclined to give it another chance and uh, Bling Kamala gets a ride on it. Uh, form before the last race, certainly would make it a runner here. Then just to chat about your ex filly, well now mayor number nine, Big Sky Country. This is a horse at best could certainly muddy the waters. At, at best, definitely. She has issues, but at best she'd be, she could beat a field like this. She, she, what have they got her merit rating down to? 60 something. 66, I think. 66. Yeah, you know, she was up near 80. Uh, I, I really think it, uh, if she puts it all together with a very good rider in Keegan de Mello, she's got to be ridden, and Gavin will know, she's got to be ridden very quietly. So there you have it from Paul and I, and now we'll move along to the shortlist. So let's take a look at my shortlist. We'll bring that up, and we're going to go with number... To Grinkov in race number six as a place accumulator banker. You'll notice at the bottom, Grinkov's also a barpot banker along with race two, number two, Fedra. And then a horse to watch out for is race five, number 10, Bush Tracker. So all in all, the Glen Cotson team, they will be raiding the Fairview race course with a number of horses. And I think they're a stable that we need to keep a very close eye on. So best of racing to all involved for the Algoa Cup race meeting. And we'll catch you at the races.